Welcome to the Biobalance HealthCast, episode number 290, Oxytocin, Sex, and Orgasm. Biobalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at Biobalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. So we have been doing a series of conversations about hormones and particularly about as you age, the fact that many of your hormone productions decrease and the systems that your body has utilized and relied on throughout your lifetime began to, to creak and groan and moan and, and not run as smoothly and efficiently. And this is what aging mm-hmm. represents. And so this week, we're going to talk about another such hormone, the hormone oxytocin, which is really a, an integral component of being vivacious and alive and warm uh, because it's tied to sexual stimulation, sexual satisfaction. Mm-hmm. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of the things we're going to talk about is that there's a term called anorgasmia. There are certain people that are not able to have orgasms at all. And what the studies show is that if you give those people oxytocin, many of them recover or develop the ability to have orgasms That's when true. they've not been able to have them before. Now, obviously, sometimes people don't have orgasms because of trauma histories and there's a, a, a mental blocking of, of access to to those things. I mean, their system just shuts down. But people that are anorgasmic, not because of some trauma history, but because their chemical balances are not right, one of the balances that is unbalanced or imbalanced is the chemical, uh, the hormone oxytocin. Well, many of the hormones that we have, I mean, if you look at any individual We all secrete different levels Mm -hmm. within the normal range of our hormones. So there are some, some, especially women, who make less oxytocin than others. And part of that has to do with the fact that oxytocin is stimulated in in one way. There's multiple stimulations. But stimulated by testosterone and growth hormone. So both of those hormones of young, and that's hormones of young people, then are actually stimulating the oxytocin production. So if you have a very low level, you're on the bell curve and you have a very low level level of testosterone your whole life, you have a low level of oxytocin. If you're doing a flow chart of the uh, creation of certain hormones, these two are both sort of after effects of testosterone. Yes. And so if you don't have testosterone in sufficient amounts, you're not going to have oxytocin. Right. Many of the patients that I have that come in and say, I've never had an orgasm or I can only have an orgasm with masturbation. Mm-hmm. Then I then when we treat them with testosterone, they come in and tell me, guess what came back? I mean, I don't even have to treat them with or with uh, oxytocin. They get their orgasms no. back without that. It, it's amazing to me how much I don't know and how much I continue <laughs> to learn. I, I remember 20 something years ago having a client that came in with exactly a couple exactly that issue. She could not achieve an orgasm Mm -hmm. with sex with him. She had to do it with masturbation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we work on all the emotional, historic uh, components, childhood memories, whatever, Mm -hmm. that might be impacting or or limiting that. Mm -hmm. If I had known then what Mm -hmm. you just said, I could have said, you know, maybe you ought to try oxytocin. Go to your gynecologist, go to a physician. Or easier, try some testosterone and then if that doesn't work, try oxytocin. Yeah. We don't usually have to use oxytocin, but you can take oxytocin. It is used uh, or is made by um, compounding pharmacies in a form that you can take before sex so that you can achieve an orgasm. Yeah. But oxytocin is also used in mainstream medicine, and it's called pitocin. It's the hormone that starts labor and starts contractions of the uterus. So many women say, I never went into labor. Well, many of those women didn't have a lot of oxytocin to begin with. Mm -hmm. And so when we give them oxytocin, then they start their labor. But it does kick labor in. Now, midwives don't put IVs in and don't use IV uh, pitocin. So what they do is they have 
someone, usually usually the partner or the husband, stimulate the the pregnant woman's breasts, and that causes oxytocin because oxytocin can be stimulated by breast stimulation. Now, that doesn't always work if you don't have any testosterone. Right. So it, it, it is a matter of having the right environment and then having your oxytocin stimulated. So the right environment is, is a normal testosterone, a normal growth hormone, and then stimulating in the normal way. If that doesn't work, then we actually have to use oxytocin and say, just use this before sex, or some people use it every day. So as a gynecologist, as a physician, do you, is this part of your repertoire of questions that you ask women, or do you wait until they come in and say, I'm having difficulty with this, uh, my husband and I are, are having difficulties around sex, and then you get into the dialogue about, tell me about the process, mm-hmm. tell me about how it works for you, what you're able or not able to do, how you feel. What you're aware of. I mean, do you have those? You know, interestingly enough, we usually have about 20 minutes at the most uh-huh. with a patient. I mean, that's a that's a long visit for a gynecologist. So usually, what we'll do is we'll take in the information, do their well woman exam because that's what we have allotted, and then most people would schedule a longer exam for this kind of thing. And if that that doctor doesn't feel comfortable with talking about sex with their patients, which yeah. many don't, then they'll send them to a counselor to... Well, I'm always having to talk about it. To, I know you are, and most counselors are. And they're, most of them are actually trained in that. have to tell you that most of my training has been through reading all these different right. different medical books and, right. and non-medical books about how the different hormones affect sex. I don't think that any... I mean... Any program it's not a tells component people part of gynecological education, right? And it should be. We're we're supposed to be the. I would assume. I mean, as we a should, common we, citizen, I would assume that's the place you go first. Women say, would. Women wrong. would go to a gynecologist who should hold the key to all the hormones that affect sex because we take care of the babies too. Mm-hmm. So you have to get there. Well, and talk about affecting sex. There, there are often issues like lubrication mm-hmm. uh, or. or uh, preparation, availability, mm-hmm. moisturization, flexibility that are required for uh, happy sex life. Right. And to have an orgasm, women have to have a uh, vasodilation or dilation of the blood vessels so that all the fluid can come to their vagina, to their clitoris, to to kind of swell the vagina. And so that, that uses oxytocin's effect on the blood vessels as a vasodilator. So you re- you need that to have so an you orgasm. Maximize the surface area of the skin, right? So, so you can have much more stimulation. Registers more highly and, and more globally. That's right. That's right. And without oxytocin, that doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. And in an extreme in an extreme situation, a woman would say, "Man, I've got my sex drive back with the testosterone. I've got my you know my growth hormones up. I'm making muscle, and you know I'm starting to feel good, but." My vagina is so dry, yeah. you know, and it doesn't it doesn't get wetter when I'm having intercourse. Then, so, so those people I have to use oxytocin. And then as laymen, they interpret that to mean I'm resistant to my husband, right? I'm not attracted to him anymore. That's longer. because for I'm years not. the gynecologists were, were actually saying things like that because that's yeah. what we were taught, right? I mean, as as recently as 15 years ago, right? That it had to do with stimulation and not. Our, us ourselves receptivity you know you got to be approachable you, know, you can't be sitting there thinking i still need to mop the floor and fix the kids lunches well that's true i mean being distracted is a problem for women more than men we're more multi-tax taskers <laughs> unless the television's on <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> unless there's a really good game yeah a good yeah, game of anything. that's true yeah. and then it's like oh, oh no, what no game starting <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. In any case, that's that is true. But men seem to focus better. I mean, just as a gender difference. Yes. Uh, not oh, well, all men. Sex, there is no all. Yeah. It's all. It's basically. But most men tend to focus better, and most women have kind of their brains in lots of different areas. So, so that makes it easier for us to get distracted. So, so we're talking about biometric mechanics mm-hmm. and oxytocin being one of those. But that's sort of downstream from where the conversations begin mm-hmm. or diagnostically when you begin to recognize there's a concern. Mm-hmm. So what are some of the symptoms the signs, that telegraph yeah. to you? Maybe we're looking at an oxytocin deficiency before you actually measure the blood and, and find mm-hmm. out is there is there a shortage here? 
Well, interestingly enough, I can kind of tell across the table. Usually yeah. people uh, who have no oxytocin have no vasodilation in any of their skin. So they don't get that the, the nice cheeks uh, that get red when they go out in the cold. They don't have a happy glow on they their look face. Sort of pale all the time. They look pale all is, the time. Is it the same kind of pale that when we go out and I say that guy's a heart attack waiting to happen? Is that the same kind? That's of, part of it. That's part of it. That's a, the, that's I mean, not skin all looks of it. Waxen and right. Pale that's part and, of it. That's lack of blood flow. Yes. And it can be from your heart. It can be from low testosterone. So it's another one of those through decisions. yeah testosterone through oxytocin testosterone through. Um, melanocyte stimulating hormone through right. other hormones. It's all chemicals, you guys. We knew that. <laughs> but it's all chemicals and their effect on the cells. As Ronald Reagan used to say, better living through chemistry. Yeah, well, I didn't know he said that. Yeah, well, he was That's a hired, because you're a, a hired Democrat. Gun when, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I mean, it's what he did for a living. I mean, for yeah. GE. So. Mm -hmm. Well, but anyway. <laughs> I learn something new every but day. Yes, I am a in an, in any <laughs> <laughs> In any case, the, um, when I'm looking, when I, I, I don't want to miss anything, when I'm looking at people and I'm trying to decide, usually they're a little introverted, a little internally, um, withdrawn, even if they were never withdrawn before, they're not outgoing, they're not friendly, they don't have a lot of friends, they don't have a lot of interactions that that's part of oxytocin. Oxytocin gives you that friendly thing Be before. <laughs> Before you started replacing her testosterone that has been lost, my wife regularly, consistently was cold all the time. Right. And occasionally irritable. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's enough. So cold and irritable is uh, one of the telegraphing signals mm -hmm. that you recognize. It makes you say, okay, it could be A, B, or C. But right. But among those, A, B, and C is testosterone and oxytocin. That's right. That's right. And, and cold yeah. can be low thyroid. Right. So, so yeah. there's a lot Again, of things ABC, you have yeah. to go through to figure this out. Not only do I have to look at a patient and listen to her and ask her about her sex life and her and how she responds and and thankfully I get information from spouses that come with their wives too. So, I mean, the it's eye a, rolls Yeah, I do. They sit back and they go <laughs> like this when they, you know, nonverbal. Yeah, when they when their wife is saying something that they don't quite yeah. Agree with. Or, or their husband. I mean, it goes both yeah, ways. Yeah, it goes yeah. both ways. Having said that, that, there are a lot more women because testosterone is a lot lower in women and yes. it's a lot easier to have a deficiency, but there's a lot more women who have anorgasmia than there is men who do. Right. And, but if you look, if you look at the timeline, most people are orgasmic, have good, good color in their skin. They have, they have, um, Happy faces, well, they're energetic. The just, just, sometimes. yeah. It's just, yeah, it's just, people are yeah. Just yeah. think about going to a college and everybody's. There's tons of oxytocin in co in the college. I mean, college age kids, but we kind of start losing it as our as our testosterone and growth hormones start well, depends, going down. So does oxytocin. When you go to the college because if you go around final exam time or playoff time, stress reduces or That's suppresses true. oxytocin. That's and right. And it's also true in your own life. I mean, if you are in a very stressful period. Uh, the rent's due and you can't pay it, then you're not going to be as arousable or responsive mm -hmm. sexually uh, or as able to satisfactorily complete uh, sexual behavior. Some, mm -hmm. Sometimes in the middle of it, everything just dies. Mm -hmm. And and the, the interest goes away, the erection goes away, mm -hmm. the, the investment goes away mm -hmm. because, in part, stress suppresses oxytocin. And the way, the way it does like You can't can drive be... the car if they don't have gas in the tank. That's right. That's right, but stress works through cortisol. So when cortisol goes way up, it decreases oxytocin, it decreases your responsiveness, and it also binds up your testosterone. So it works in multiple different ways. Right. Partially, if you think about it, that makes sense. If you have, if if you're like God looking down on the human species, if they're stressed, they shouldn't be making babies because they can't take care of them. So that means women would, women and men would both say, "No, nah, we're not doing that," or they can't complete it. So, and that's a way of controlling population during terrible, stressful times. So now we're not nearly as stressed in the third world. I mean, in the, in the first, are we the first world or the third world? Got me. Yes. So in, in developed countries, our stress is different. It isn't life or death, but our stress still does the same things to our bodies. One of the things that was really interesting about oxytocin that I think is is important. I ask patients all the time, did you have trouble breastfeeding your baby? 
You know, that's one of the things where you can find a lifetime of low oxytocin or, and if they say, yes, I could never get the milk to let down. I wasn't successful. Oftentimes that's a lack of oxytocin because it is necessary. Oxytocin is necessary for milk letdown. I mean, you need prolactin to make milk, but you need oxytocin to let it down and, and feed a baby. So, so those people who tell me, mm, I could never breastfeed, that's probably either a lifetime of terrible stress or a lifetime of, uh, of low oxytocin because of them being at the bell, end of the bell curve where they have very little, mm -hmm. and they just, they just can't get that to happen. So it seems as if what you're saying is that oxytocin is involved in the mechanism of dilation and contraction right. of blood vessels mm -hmm. and, and muscles too. Yeah, and muscle, the contractions of the uterus. So in, with, when you have an orgasm. For orgasm for right. dropping your milk to yeah, make it flow. That's right. That, that you're producing, but it's mm -hmm. got to be able to come out. So, right. so some, the mechanics of it are all involved in those processes. And, and you know, and sexual stimulation of the cold, breast also skin, stimulates the oxytocin. Blush. Yes. So, but so it, it makes us young and healthy. It gives us sex. <laughs> it makes us happy. Mm -hmm. You know, and 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 so for us, this is the young it is another young person's hormone, and we want to maintain that. So either we have to stimulate it by the proper sexual stimulation, breast stimulation, whatever. Or we have to stimulate it by giving someone testosterone to stimulate the oxytocin. If that pathway is broken somehow, head injury or some some other reason that they they can't get the testosterone to stimulate the oxytocin, we actually give sublingual oxytocin under the tongue. And there are several different doses. We usually slight, go up a little bit at a time till we hit that critical dose that they need to actually complete an orgasm. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm just thinking globally. Uh, another another factor that you mentioned in preparation for this podcast is that uh, some people who suffer from Asperger's syndrome right. suffer from a deficiency of oxytocin. Yep. And if you replace their oxytocin, sometimes that their their socialization abilities improve. Asperger's autism. It's on the it's autism the spectrum, spe spectrum right. but but there are studies that have used oxytocin mm -hmm. in treating both syndromes to make these ch children and I guess adults as well, but the studies were on children to make them more social, to make them interact, to make eye contact, you know, right. to, to have the things that we consider normal social behavior so that they can live in our world. And, and we can't really live in their world, but they, but this would help them live in ours. And that I don't, I don't provide that because I don't take care of children and I'm not qualified to take care of children. But there are places around the United States that do this for both Asperger's and autism. Right. And it works. For so some. For, some, for many of them, it makes them more social. It may not bring them back to totally normal, but, but social enough that they can get along in social situations. So... Essentially, what we're saying is obviously you're not physicians and, and you, you really don't have access to the information that, that Dr. Bob and other doctors would have because they can do the medical studies, they can do the blood tests and so on to measure the content of your chemistry. But relationship issues, sexual issues, especially with regard to arousal, completion, orgasm, those things can be relational. They can be impacted by the amount of stress in your life and the way you manage it. They can be impacted by... Uh, communication about what's going on with you and, and the connective communication between partners, uh, how you signal, how, how someone knows that you're signaling. Uh, you Meaning know, signal to have sex. Yeah, yeah, signal like I'm interested yeah. in you or you're interested in me. All of that stuff happens at multiple layers or levels of involvement, mm -hmm. not the least of which is biochemical. Mm -hmm. And so if you and or your partner are struggling with the ability to have sexual desire, uh, orgasm, completion, satisfaction, to be generally happy in your life and, and in your relationship, one of the components that you might want to consider is having an intimate discussion with your physician and or your counselor who refer back and forth or talk back and forth as, as the way that we mm -hmm. did when we began working together mm -hmm. to ask if testosterone loss and oxytocin 
uh, loss can be ingredients that could be adjusted to see if that adjustment would be satisfactory. But you're also going to have to look at stress management, communication, relational interactions, uh, personal history, I mean, mm -hmm. religious beliefs. It's really a complex That's your area. Dynamic. My area is easy. Well, just, the, that's we just figure out the chemicals. <laughs> that's, that's part of what we're saying, though, yeah. is there's, there's a, it, it, it's better to use a shotgun and examine all these component elements where the, where the little pellets hit and say, what can we do with all this, than to just say it's a single target bullet that we're looking for, and that's the, the magic mm -hmm. bullet that's going to fix everything. Mm -hmm. And oxytocin is not the magic bullet, but it certainly helps the magic happen. So be aware <laughs> that oxytocin is important, uh, and, and don't be afraid to talk to your physician about whether or not that should be a concern for you, because they can find out pretty easily. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.